Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So, this has been quite an interesting week in, I was going to say the Eurovision fandom, but that'd be incorrect. Twitter Eurovision fandom. Different breed. <laughs> different breed, different character characteristics. And I'll talk about that in a second. But ultimately what it means is this week, if you are on Twitter and you do kind of engage with the Eurovision fandom on Twitter, then you will know that I don't think a lot of us have yet experienced that kind of post Eurovision blues, it's over, because there has been this kind of trip, trickle effect that has continued on Twitter uh, in regards to Eurovision 2022. It's not quite over. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. I'm not very good with Twitter. I set up Twitter when I started up my account over a year ago and I didn't really use it. I didn't really know how to use it. I think I used it, but I didn't really know how to use it. And then it was the Balkan guy, Amir, uh, a YouTuber who I'm now friends with, who was like, right. And he was giving me some like advice as a younger guy. He's a lot younger than I am. <laughs> and he was like, right, Twitter, blah, 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 blah. TikTok, blah, 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 blah. Instagram, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh, that seems a lot of work. <laughs> and I don't really get any of it. Um, so I remember coming back from Serbia and um, Zooming my sister, um, Maya, whose birthday is today. So happy 19th birthday. And just being like, give me the lowdown. You're like 18, she's now 19 today. What's TikTok about? How do I use TikTok? How do I use Twitter to kind of, I guess, uh, promote my channel a little bit? And it's just gone horrifically unsuccessfully. <laughs> It's just, I just haven't really done it. I've tried, like I tried TikTok and then that got a bit of a, <laughs> bit of a problem at work. So I had to kind of abandon that. And after abandoning that, like this is why I shouldn't really embrace social media because <laughs> I came back from Turin and the Balkan guy, Amma was like, um, have you been hacked by like an 11 year old girl? And it actually transpired to be true. An 11 year old girl hacked my TikTok account, deleted all of my most watched videos and just posted videos of her just like singing to songs. And I was like, I need to stop TikTok now. <laughs> if an 11 year old girl can hack my account, then abandon ship, abandon ship, abort, abort. But Twitter, now I haven't, I tried to do a little bit of Twitter when I was watching the rehearsals in the online press room. And I, 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 I tried. Um, but ultimately I'm just loving just reading. I'm not really engaging very much, but I'm just loving reading. Um, so, I mean, had I not had Twitter, I wouldn't have been able to know kind of small things, which I found very interesting. Like I didn't know JK Rowling tweeted that Azerbaijan was robbed. Um, I've like, I think like if you're a subscriber to my channel, then you will know that I haven't necessarily talked favorably about Azerbaijan's song this year. Nothing against Azerbaijan, nothing against Nadir. I just thought the song's pretty weak. Um, so, and again, to respond to people being like, what do you mean you were surprised it got 12 points from the jury? It's jury bait. I was like, okay, well, there was a lot of jury bait songs in that semi-final that were much better. The songs were better than that song. Anyway, JK Rowling, love the fact you're watching Eurovision. Amazing. Love the fact that you're tweeting Eurovision. Actually, hashtag Eurovision 2022. Interesting choice. But again, we can't fault it because everything is an opinion. My whole channel is my opinion. So I can't be like, she's wrong because I don't have any objective measure. But I think it's quite interesting that she uh, connected with that one out of 25 songs. Anyway, um, I also would know that Uku from Estonia is a bit of a douche. I'm <laughs> just trying to think of a politically correct word to say. Like, through Twitter and the Eurovision fandom, like, the video went viral of him in 2017 basically saying, in front of Victor Krune, which is, in my opinion, A, a good song, I don't particularly know him, but Stefan, who I've met and a little bit obsessed with. Said to Victor Kroon, Swedish, and uh, Stefan, Estonian, Armenian, I must add, said, like, when he was asked why he should win over those two in 2017, he was like, if you want someone with blood, then go for anybody, it, all three of us. But if you want Estonian blood, vote for me. I was like, 
You're such a douche. <laughs> anyway, I don't really need to say anything more about that because out of those three, he was the only one that didn't qualify. But anyway, um, I wouldn't have known that. Oh my goodness. And I also would not have known, like, I was umming and ahhing about whether to kind of continue this drama by talking about this. But like, there's a few people, actually quite a lot of my subscribers, I don't think have Twitter and rightfully so. It generally is a cesspit of hate. Like it is generally a place where everyone feels entitled to have an opinion, which is true, freedom of speech. But like, I do think a lot of people need to think before they post. So if you are on Twitter, then you cannot not have been introduced to the kind of bit of drama around Maxi Rainbow. Now Maxi Rainbow, um, I, I'm a, am I a subscriber to Maxi Rainbow's channel? I know I used to be, but I had a kind of purge a few months ago. No, I'm not anymore actually. I think it's Maxi Rainbow hadn't posted for a while and I was like, um, okay. So yeah, but anyway, I follow Maxi Rainbow on Twitter. I do find them quite entertaining in regards to what they post, whether I agree or disagree with it. So I think Maxi Rainbow, in regards to Eurovision fandom, a lot of people are aware who it is. So I think in that sense, it's someone that we can talk about in regards to, I don't know really, I don't want to say like a Eurovision celebrity because I don't necessarily want to give that title to, to anyone really. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm delaying the inevitable. But what I am going to talk about is Maxi Rainbow and his fallout with Renella fans. So, I mean, it started off with someone acknowledging an interview that Monica Lou did uh, back in Lithuania, in Lithuanian, whereby she just stated that after the semi-final results backstage, Renella was yelling at everyone. Now, there's nothing in that translation to suggest that Monica has said it was outrageous, she was a diva all of that stuff. I think I think that's appropriate to say in an interview, like, went backstage, Renella was yelling at everyone because she was evidently upset and disappointed. I'm not justifying, again, it says yelling at everyone. Is that just her team or is that like the crew and stuff like that, as in like the RyQ crew, the Eurovision crew? Um, so that might need a bit of clarification. I will say before I forget, uh, Renella has unfollowed Monica. I think even maybe just mentioning it, maybe Renella's like, that was unnecessary, you didn't need to mention it. Um, but I will say when I interviewed Monica, she even mentioned Renella and the fact that actually, because I think they both did a lot of the kind of pre-parties together, so they were familiar with each other. And Monica seemed to light up when she talked about Renella, so. Second question, um, if you could sit next to a famous celebrity in a restaurant, who would you sit next to? Renella. <laughs> <laughs> Renella, the good answer. Renella from our baby. I love Renella. Okay. Bless. Yeah. Um, good on. Have you actually managed actually, to... Oh, yeah, Renella. Have you managed to speak to her recently? Because obviously on social media, there's a lot Just of in the distance. We were like, oh, baby, good luck. La, la, la. Just by the distance, because we were so, all of us were so busy. Yeah, after the rehearsals. Yeah, just like, mwah, mwah, mwah. Good on. <laughs> yeah, so that was tweeted. Someone said, Monica has told everyone that Renella lost it after the semi-finals. I will say, um, I watched the semi-final again the other day and I didn't clock this. I do think it was extremely unfair for the producers and the camera crew when the results were finalized and the final place was given to zoom in on Renella. Like that's poor taste. That's really poor taste. Maxi Rainbow says, all I'm saying is there's a reason I went from being one of the most vocal Renella stands to barely talking about her. In several instances, her behavior was inexcusable. I understand she was stressed, but everyone was, and you don't take it out on others. Okay. I mean, obviously he, uh, they, sorry, they, um, I think they then go on to say, nothing I said was a lie. Like y'all can be mad. Oh yeah. Hate has already started at this point, by the way. Uh, either Renella, I think it's just Renella fans that are Albanian. I can't say Albanian Eurovision fans. I, d I don't know, but nothing I said was a lie. Like, y'all can be mad, but it's the truth. But it's also not that big of a deal like you're making it out to be. I was just saying that behavior was a pattern that most people experience from her. I don't think she realizes how it comes across. Um, and I think they also, in the, I, I've forgotten to screenshot the kind of responses that Maxi Rainbow's trying to make when everyone's kind of coming for them. And one of the responses was like, it's not just me, a lot of people from press had a negative experience of her. Now, 
I don't think Maxi Rainbow actually ever got round to meeting Ranella because Ranella does actually say, and this is where you know where like, actually it might be worth talking about on YouTube because it has engaged a response from Ranella. Um, because Ranella says, honey, but we never met. How can you speak about someone you don't even know? I think that's kind of true. And that's where very rarely will I ever have an upper hand on someone like Maxi Rainbow, who's been around longer than I have with a bigger subscriber base. I have met, <laughs> I have met Ranella. <laughs> I actually have met Ranella um, at the Madrid pre-party. Now, I mean, look, is she a diva? Yes. Of course she's a diva. Like, she, whether she's taken on that persona and it's an act, because that first interview that she did after her first rehearsal, I, w I watched that and I was like, yeah, you, 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 you are embracing this diva role. And why not? Like, this was the year where there wasn't as many divas. And because Chanel wasn't, and Chanel's a diva, but she doesn't really know it, where Ranella did all of the pre-parties and she was the diva of this year. But I mean, what is a definition of a diva before people start kicking off? Because I think I'm using that. Diva doesn't have to be something negative because my experience of her, she was a diva, but not in the sense she was a diva. Diva definition. A celebrated, a famous female singer of popular music, a self-important person who's temperamental and difficult to please. Ah, okay, so I don't mean that one. <laughs> I don't mean that one. <laughs> Though you could see there was an, there was an air about her um, that did make me a bit on edge um, when I interviewed her. But I was nervous interviewing everyone that day anyway because it was the first time I ever did it. Like, I was nervous interviewing Sam Ryder. There's a part of my interview... I can't watch that interview. Like, a lot of the other ones I watch... A diva... So, yeah, what is that second? Temperamental. I didn't find her temperamental. But I basically... It was near the end. There wasn't much time left to interview people. And um, I went up to a member of her team and said, can I, and first of all, he was like, do you want a picture or do you want an interview? And I was like, I, could, I, I would like an interview and I promise, promise, promise it will be quick. And he said, rightfully so. He said, look, you know, we arrived like an hour ago. We were up at four. She's really tired. I'm really tired. This is good. This is just being a human. That's not being a diva, right? And, um, but he said, if you make it quick, then sure. And I'm not offended at any point at this point. I was like, oh my God, like I'm going to get to speak to Ranella. So he's, I just said to him, look, I promise you, I'm going to ask her three questions. I'm going to ask her which song, if she could sing any song from this year's entries, would she sing? Um, what's her favorite Eurovision song of all time? And um, what's the most, like, what's the thing that she's looking forward to most about going to Italy? Little did I know she was rehearsing in Italy that whole time. So that was a stupid question. Um, anyway, he said, well, I can, I, I know the answers to those already. I could answer them. I, I'm saying it like that. He didn't say it like that. And I was like, okay. So when I interviewed her, it, there was one question she stumbled on. And I said, jokingly, I said, your team said that like this would be really quick because you knew all the answers and she does this <laughs> no i like duncan i like the lot. Your head of delegation said you had quick answers to all of these questions no. so you like lots of them okay so and i was like oh my gosh i think you've just annoyed Renata. <laughs> I literally, after that, I was like, oh my gosh, just carry on, Shane. But, like, she did obviously end up with that kind of um, jovial remark of the one thing that she's looking forward to about coming to Italy is having a coffee with me. Right, so I'm based in Milan, Italy. Okay. So, other than winning Eurovision, obviously, what else are you excited about in regards to going to Turin, Italy? Then when I come in Milan, we'll have a coffee together. Beautiful, lovely. Thank you so much. Quick Thank question. You. I knew that that wasn't going to be a thing, but it was a very quick and kind of jovial comment, which I appreciated. I mean, she didn't have to speak to me at the end of the day. She, no one asked me like how, where I'm from. Like I could have been just this random person with like a channel of 50 subscribers. So the fact that her team let me speak to her and the fact that she was willing to do it and the fact that she actually allowed us to have a photo as well with her says something about her and from that like it was a pleasant experience i didn't think anything bad of her because there's been a lot of people kind of defending maxi rainbow and basically saying well yeah she's been very difficult in the whole priest 
season at different pre-parties or whatever and I was like mm, I don't know where the evidence is of that and that wasn't my experience the only thing else I'll say to kind of support her not like I owe her anything and this isn't the point of this video but I was trying to think when all of this drama was happening um and basically Maxi Rainbow is being attacked and attacked in not a very nice way I, that's not even kind of giving it justice like in regards to he's receiving a lot of hate um, and I don't particularly like the language that people use on Twitter because obviously when Renella posted that then obviously a lot of people came in support of Renella being like yeah you go girl but a lot of the comments I didn't like I don't know whether it's just lost in translation but it it was like get her get her and I was like well if someone says get her that that sounds quite aggressive it made me feel very uncomfortable to read Oh, okay, yeah, so he gets death threats. Yeah, do not ever come to Albania. We will find you and we will kill you. It's just all a bit... I'm just going through it. It's just all a bit uncomfortable. I mean, and then after a while, Ronella says, I love humanity and we came in this world to make life more beautiful. Please stop spreading hate, negativity in comments. Music is made to make people fall in love, dance and forget their troubles. People dance to secret, good staging or not. And that... Good for her, though good staging or not so you know she's not standing up and saying that was the best staging so okay um good i respect her for that um um and that was uh, i dreamed and beyond yeah so i've seen that video of her at the wee wee jam straight after it was straight after the results wasn't it and the whole audience was just absolutely loving her and she loved it For her, I think that was just as important as qualifying in that moment. What was I going to say? Oh, about the diva thing. So the next day at the, was it the purple carpet event? Yeah. There was a guy next to me and I couldn't quite work out what he was doing, but he had lots of Ukrainian ribbons and he was asking the contestants to put a ribbon on and he was recording them doing a kind of support for Ukraine. And Renella comes along, she looked beautiful, and he said, can you do it? And like everyone else, she was like, absolutely. Um, and this is what I'm saying, the slight disconnect to the Renella that I had a brief chance to speak to in my interview, and also on the red carpet, to this kind of, yeah, this, that first interview was really interesting after her first rehearsal, so I was watching it being like, you, you, you're going with the diva thing and, and rightfully so like a lot of people in, in the past have done that like I'm going to Eurovision and I'm a star um, and that's what I mean by a diva I think just like a famous female singer that um, yeah attracts a lot of attention I've made my own definition and anyway this guy said can you do it and she said yes and he gave her the pin and she struggled to put it on and and this is why I don't think a diva would do this, because she said, can you put it on? There was no one around. This was like, this was not for show or whatever. And she was like, can you put it here? Like, on her breast. Yeah, that's a scientific term, right? Breast. Um, and and I, I made a joke, which either she didn't hear or she didn't find funny. I was like, don't poke her, as in like, because it was, and, and to be honest, bless her, she was so patient, she was so sweet, like, there's this poor guy, like, being asked to put on this ribbon here, and, you know, and, and, and they were being, not rushed on the purple carpet, but, like, there's a lot of people that want to speak to you, and she was there being like, take your time, take your time, and, like, he was literally, like, not as in, like, doing this, but I just don't think a diva would do that. There we go. I don't think a diva would do that. I can't comment on Ranella in Turin. I can't. All I can say was my experience of her in Madrid. And I haven't got any negative things to say about her in Madrid. I was really, really thankful that she took the time to speak to me. She didn't have to. I thought when I spoke to her, she was really, really nice. And that she, she was answering my questions genuinely, not knowing who I was. And like I said, that moment with Ronella and the guy next to me kind of stood out to me a little bit, being like, she's nice, she's nice. So, 
I'm not doing this, by the way, to defend Ranella or to defend her. But I was, I'm doing this to talk about what's been happening on Twitter this week, but also being like, well, I have some stuff to say in regards to just my personal experience with Ranella. Um, so that is that. Um, yeah. That was a really long story. I'm really sorry, because the purpose of this video is to watch Subwoofer's song. <laughs> so um, this, is gonna be, this video is going to be weird, because I've got a haircut appointment now. So I'm going to have to stop this get my haircut, come back, watch the subwoofer video, and then it's just gonna be a weird video. Just hold on, I'm gonna get my haircut and I'll come back. Hey, so um, I'm back <laughs> with my new haircut. Um, on reflection, I just wanna make a couple of things clear. I was thinking, obviously, on the way to and fro from my haircut, things that I didn't say earlier. Number one, I think, at the end of the day, you could clearly see um, that Ranella during her time at Eurovision, it just wasn't going to plan. And I think we can excuse her if she lost her temper or, I mean, even if, even if those things are true, then I think we can totally understand. You could see that Eurovision had been her dream. And, you know, I'm just thinking if the shoe was on the other foot and it was me and I was going there and, you know, with the weight of the world on my shoulders, like Albania, get behind their act and I think there's a lot of pressure on Albanian acts and moreover there was a bit more pressure on Ranella because this was the first time in a long time that Albania was sending a bop like an upbeat number and they were taking a risk and she was going with that pressure being like if this doesn't qualify or doesn't do well what does that mean moving forward for the sort of songs that Albania picks and you know, moreover if if she did lose it after the, semi the semi-final results then fair enough like she's lived and breathed that whole eurovision experience from winning um thick in december like she did all the pre-parties she'd been rehearsing as far as i could see on her in uh, her, her twitter instagram whatever she'd been rehearsing non-stop and you know if it's not going well then you can totally kind of forgive her for just not having the best experience i think the best piece of evidence of that was when Wee Wee Blogs, after her second rehearsal, basically said that was the best she's ever done. And she responded, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram, I can't remember, Twitter, being like, thank you so much. That meant so much to her to get some sort of validation from Wee Wee Blogs that she was heading in the right direction. I, it'd be interesting in when everything's calmed down a few months, a year's time, when Ranella kind of openly talks about her Eurovision experience to basically see kind of how it went for her. But I think we can forgive her if, you know, she didn't show her best self, maybe, because I think we all would have done that. We're all human. And at the end of the day, I just want to thank Ranella for giving us a brilliant, it's still in my top 10 secret. It's an amazing song. Um, and I quite liked the kind of diva aspect character persona that she brought to Eurovision 2022. So yeah, I want to make that clear. Number two, I just also want to make it clear that it's really not okay to the sort of messages that I'm having that I'm reading voluntarily, but obviously Maxi Rainbow has to read of people obviously standing up for Renella. As Renella said herself, like, don't do it. Like, it's just showing the worst traits of humanity. And some of the messages, like, there's no justification. There's no justification. Maxi Rainbow never said, you know, Renella was this, X, Y, and Z. He just said basically what he thought or hearsay about maybe how Renella kind of, yeah, came across during Eurovision. I mean, it, it, there's nothing there that warrants or justifies the sort of kind of hideous comments that is being put there. So that's not okay. It is what it is. Right, let's have a look at Subwoofer because this is the other thing that's happened on Twitter that I can see over the last week where people are deciding to cancel <laughs> these space wolves. Um, are space wolves from outer space? That's just, you're not adding anything there, Shane. Space wolves, they are from space. Okay, let's have a look at this song that they've dropped and see what all the fuss is about. Okay, Space Kelly. Okay, so it's a Mika. It's a take on Mika. Yes, you confuse me. What is under the mask? Who are you? It's quite funny. They're like, what mask? 
we're real space wolves. We were too handsome, and if we showed you, it would just hurt and melt your eyes. You saw us dance like Chanel. I saw that, it was very good. I thought they were bad. It's in the next part, Acapella. We're old enough to be her dad. <laughs> it's true. I like. I know. Obviously, it's definitely Ben Adams from Nor um, from A One. The other one is confirmed by Norwegians, but I don't know who that is. Um, <clears throat> quite. If you ever feel nostalgic about Eurovision 2022, watch this video. I'm still yet to see what the drama is. I don't know why they've been cancelled. They also probably don't care. It must be Elvis. That was what everyone was saying at the beginning. That's true. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Uh, Space Wolves. <laughs> yeah. I said Ockman was definitely top 10. I thought he was going to be top 5. But things happen. That's Eurovision. <laughs> it's a bit cheeky saying S10 and Ockman were, were down for top 10 and didn't get it. Space Wolves. I know you're not human, so you probably don't really kind of... <laughs> Understand, yeah. You can annoy some people by saying that. Hold on a minute. Didn't Cornelia beat Subwoofer? Um, their lyrics were all right. Subwoofer. I can see why people want to cancel you. I mean, I don't care. I find this song great, but. Yeah. You definitely know how to create or attract some attention. We gave a big hug to Mika. You did. Two hundred million people saw. They did. Jim is an attention seeker. <laughs> he is. Keith is a media. <laughs> <laughs> could be Sam, could be constrict, could be confused. Mm -hmm. Tell me why would like to be yellow? Just let the sun, just let the sun. Okay. Alan Walker. Oh, hold on a minute. I forgot to say this about ticks. It's not ticks. It's not ticks. I um it can't be ticks because after semi-final two dress rehearsals, I I went out pretty sharpish and ticks was outside greeting fans. It's not ticks, by the way, if people think it's ticks. As in, it, it, the, the times can't, don't correspond. This was a fun experience. Let's go back to the moon that makes the world Oh, Subwoofer. Thanks for your support in Eurovision. Yeah. Well, thank you for adding some sort of kind of extra fun to Eurovision 2022. You would have seen, um, if you've watched Eurovision T, like people like Jordan, like absolutely bought into Subwoofer because the amount of effort and time that they went into creating the whole narrative and they stuck to it the whole time. Um, first and foremost, I was gonna say, polls aren't gonna, <laughs> aren't gonna respond to that very well. Um, yeah, I know obviously Albanians coming um, and supporting Renella. It's gonna be a lot of polls out there for Ockman. Um, but yeah, you could have put, that was the same, Pol Polish fans, Greek fans, Subwoofer. I've only been doing this for a year, but I know which fan base is the one that you don't wanna. <laughs> Prod the beast. Um, there's nothing in that song that warrants being canceled. I thought it was um, respectful. Well, I mean, yeah, everyone did think S10 and everyone did think Poland was certain top 10 and they didn't end up being top 10, that's fact. Yeah, because this was 10th, right? So, and then Netherlands was 11th, Poland was 12th. I mean, it's a bit of a kind of like a into the side, isn't it? But like, I didn't, I, I have seen some kind of things from Greek fans on Twitter. I didn't think they said anything bad other than the fact that people preferred yum, 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 but they didn't because Cornelia and Amanda beat them, so. Yeah. Um, that was disappointing. I thought that was going to be like real kind of like 
drama, but there was nothing in there that warrants to be cancelled. Subwoofer, if you want to come back to Earth and uh, grace us again with another song, then please do. Alternatively, coming back to reality, can't wait to find out your identities like everyone else. Okay, so that is that. We'll leave that for today. Um, It's 38 degrees in Milan, so I'm going to put on a fan and just stand in front of it for the rest of the day. Um, But if you're still here and you've not uh, subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. Please do click the notification button so you're informed if and when I post videos. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.